I'm going to pray before we start. May God's word be spoken, may God's word be heard, and may God's word be lived. Amen. The Gospels teach us important truths about who Jesus is and about who we are because of him. And we will be looking at a few passages from the Gospel of Mark this morning and using that to answer the question of whether Jesus is worthy of being followed, a question which has shaped the course of human history. Then we will look at what this passage tells us about what following Jesus can actually look like. I believe that this passage teaches us that Jesus is worthy of being followed because he is both compassionate friend and powerful Lord. So let's look at these two aspects of Jesus' identity that we see in the passage today that make him worthy of being followed. First, this passage teaches us that Jesus is worthy of being followed because he is our compassionate friend. We see the tender heart of Jesus in this story when he invites the disciples to rest in verse 31. Jesus knows our physical and our spiritual needs before we even know them. And Jesus tells us to rest when he knows that we need it. Many of you will know Psalm 23. It's one of my favorites. And one of the verses from that psalm that has always stood out to me is the second verse. And I particularly like the King James Version of this specific verse. He maketh me to lie down. Life with Jesus includes true rest. Jesus gives us rest when he knows that we need it. We also see the tender heart of Jesus in this passage when Jesus is moved by compassion towards the people in the story. And it says in verse 34 that he was moved by compassion and he regarded them as sheep without a shepherd. And it's really interesting how Jesus responds to this. When Jesus recognizes that the people are lost, he responds by teaching. And what this says to me is that Jesus does not only fulfill our physical needs, but he f recognizes that our deepest need and our deepest hunger is for the word of God. It is for the message of truth, of hope, of the gospel. It's significant that these verses come before the feeding of the 5,000, in which Jesus fulfills thousands of people's physical needs by providing them with food. But he doesn't just fill them until they are no longer hungry, but he gives them way beyond what they need, way more food than the people needed. And it is the exact same with the spiritual food that Jesus feeds us. In John 10, verse 10, it says that Jesus came not to just give us life, but to give us life abundantly, to give us life overflowing. A different translation says that Jesus came to give us life in all its fullness, life overflowing. While we're on this earth, Jesus will look after our physical needs. But what makes him unique is that he has an eternal perspective. Jesus is thinking of the long game. Jesus is primarily focused on our souls, our eternal bodies, which is why his concern is always for our spiritual health. Jesus is worth following because he is our compassionate friend that fills all of our needs, especially our deepest need, which is for the word of God. Secondly, we learn that Jesus is worthy of being followed in this story because he is powerful Lord. Jesus's authority over the laws of nature are made really clear in these passages. Throughout the entirety of the sixth 
chapter of Mark, we hear of loads of miracles and signs and wonders that Jesus has been performing. The verses that we read this morning come from the end of chapter 6, and Mark concludes this chapter, which has been focusing on Jesus' dominion over the laws of nature. He concludes this focus with a final healing of a really large group of people. Even Jesus healing one sick person is enough for us to follow him, but he heals hundreds of people. I can't even imagine what that must have been like. There is a wonderful description of Jesus' first ever miracle in John chapter 2. And it says that Jesus' miracles, Jesus' signs, revealed his glory. And I think that this is such a great picture of what the miracles of Jesus really do. Jesus' power is not just an interesting aspect of his personality or some detail in the gospel stories. They reveal his glory. They reveal his true identity as the only son of the living God. So what does this mean for following Jesus? If Jesus really is this powerful Lord that the gospels say he is, why does that mean that we should follow him and entrust our lives to him? And this is where it's helpful to return back to that idea of Jesus being our compassionate friend. Jesus is not just a powerful Lord who is able to do incredible things or use his power in any way that he wants. Jesus is a powerful Lord who wants to use his power to love us, to transform our lives. How lucky are we that we get to have a relationship with someone with that kind of transformative power. At St. Clement's, near the end of our service, we say a blessing, which includes the phrase, glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. It's important that when we think about Jesus as powerful Lord, we don't forget that he is also our loving friend. But at the same time, we cannot simply regard Jesus as a companion because he is so much more than that. He is a companion like no other, a companion with the ability to identify with our pain and our suffering in a way that no one else can a companion that is able to heal the sick and completely turn our lives around. Jesus' tender heart and his authority and his dominion, these two aspects of his identity, are really well shown in his death and his resurrection. Jesus' kindness is most exemplified in his death on the cross. And his authority, his power, his dominion, his lordship is best seen in his resurrection. Stick around St. Clement's for Easter if you want to hear more about that story. When we recognize Jesus' identity as friend and as lord, we can't help but run to him with our sick hearts. One of the many things that I love about the story we read this morning is that it says that the people rushed to Jesus to bring the sick to him. And I found this a bit convicting. Why don't I run to Jesus when I need healing? Or when I need, most importantly, spiritual healing? Why do I not immediately present my sick heart to Jesus the way that I should? Many other people, things, forces in this world will claim to be able to heal our hearts. But we need to bring our brokenness to Jesus. The difference between a Christian and a non-Christian is not brokenness. The difference is who we go to for healing. It's almost as if since Jesus created us and made our very souls, he knows best how to put those pieces back together when we are broken. 
It says in the story that the people recognized that Jesus was a healer because they knew him. Once we get to know Jesus by speaking to him in prayer, by reading about him in the Gospels, we will find ourselves wanting to run to him with our broken hearts. A great part of having a relationship with Jesus and coming to him in our brokenness is that Jesus does not force himself upon us. Coming to Jesus is entirely a free choice. Jesus is always responding to our needs. And we see this in this morning's gospel. Jesus does not rush to heal the people that he knows are sick. And he would have known who is sick. Jesus responds when the people come to him. And Jesus will respond when you come to him. So Jesus is worthy of being followed because he is a compassionate friend and powerful Lord. But what is coming to Jesus and following Jesus? What does this actually look like? Following Jesus is an adventure made up of many parts, and we will look at a few of those this morning. First, following Jesus means living the way that he lived. And one aspect of Jesus' character that we see in this passage is that Jesus had compassion. It says in verse 34 that Jesus had compassion. And what I find really convicting about this part of the story is that Jesus' compassion always motivated action. Jesus responds when he's moved by compassion to heal, to teach, to help those in need. How often are we moved by compassion and then we move on to something else or something else grabs our attention? One way that we can live the way that Jesus lived today is that when we are next moved by compassion, we need to let that bring us towards action. And we are not called to do that alone. We are not called to do anything alone. We can pray for and cultivate true compassion. We can ask Jesus to help us be more compassionate and for that to lead into action. Even just taking a few minutes in the morning and asking Jesus for true compassion is something that you can start doing today. In Matthew 7, it says, Ask, and it shall be given to you. All who ask Jesus for more compassion will receive it. Another important thing that we learn about following Jesus from this story and from the entirety of the Bible is that the call to follow is for everyone. Jesus did not call a specific group of people to follow him. He called everyone, the same way in the story that all who touched Jesus were healed. The gospel of Jesus, the good news of Jesus, is a message of totality. It is a universal gospel. It is for everyone. And for some of you, this fact will be exciting. Jesus called me. And for some of you, this will be scary. Oh no, Jesus called me. But I promise you, Because Jesus is both powerful Lord and compassionate friend, the fact that Jesus has called you to follow him is good news. It is the best news. The call to follow Jesus is not only for everyone, but it is for everywhere. It says in our passage today that Jesus went into the villages, the cities, the farms, to find people. Jesus finds us everywhere. Jesus meets us in the highs and the lows of life, in the quiet moments, in the mundane, in the moments of regret, moments of excitement. Jesus wants to walk with us through all of these moments, and no one is better prepared to walk with you through all of these moments of life than the one who knows you best. And we will have moments, and I have had moments, where I don't want to be with Jesus. 
moments of shame, of guilt, where I don't want to be near Jesus. And in those moments, Jesus waits patiently with all the patience in the world for us to come back to him. Jesus is worthy of being followed because he is our compassionate friend and our powerful Lord. This call to follow is for everyone and everywhere. Amen.